Welcome back. My name is David Velasquez. Welcome to Broker Boss. Today, we're going to go off a little bit kind of different than what I normally go off. Um, and what we're going to talk about is education. Um, I have, just looking at my audience, I have a lot of younger males. And so in speaking to those, just kind of go over some things real quick of what I would do if I was in my mid to early 20s uh, on how what I would do to start making money and get there the fastest. Let's say that you're 20 years old. One thing that I'll put out there right away, I'm not big on college. Uh, I didn't graduate college. Which college? But I didn't graduate. But I've been in the real estate industry as a broker for 15 years. And one thing I've found is the market is moving so fast. And with technology, AI, all these other things, as a smaller company, what it allows me to do is grow faster. Okay. And learn. So if there's marketing, uh, since I've been in, Internet marketing, Google pay-per-click came up, Facebook and Facebook ads came up, social media came up, uh, YouTube came up, Google came up. So all these things, if you're going to college to learn how to use these tools, okay, it takes a professor, say it's a four-year degree. So most of the time you're going there, you're learning crap that ain't going to make you any money anyway. Okay. Okay. Then the curriculum that you get to isn't going to help you make money also, but it's curriculum that they wrote years before. And by the time you get four years through it, that stuff is so outdated, especially you're getting an MBA. You're going to get an MBA. Okay. You're going to graduate six years of school and you're going to get out and you're going to, that everything that you learned is completely outdated. Okay. The market is moving so fast. And if you're younger, what I recommend is that you learn to sell. Sell, I think has kind of gotten a bad rep. Okay. I'm, I, I'm sales. Okay. I'm proud to do it. I think it's uh and, and the old saying is, you know what the first profession was, right? Have you heard that? Right. Anyway, but really the first would have been sales because that preceded the other one. Okay. Anyway. So what I would advise you to do is learn how to sell something. And once you learn how to sell stuff, then figure out what you can sell. that's uh, more expensive where you make more money. And what you're doing is you're getting paid more for your time. Okay. And the other misnomer or the thing that I like to look at sales, if you're fearing that salesperson and you keep people are avoiding you or whatever, you're not good at sales. I think my opinion is you're good at sales when people don't know they're being sold. That's when you know you're good. When you bring good information, people want that information with houses and, and, and real estate. I'm not trying to talk someone to sell in their house that doesn't want to sell their house. OK, I am trying to find someone that absolutely wants to sell their house and don't know who or how to do it. OK, a motivated seller or a motivated buyer, someone that wants to buy a house and you have information. So if you are good at sales, then a lot of it I found is great questions, asking a lot of questions. You can lead uh, with questions. You control the uh, conversation with questions and you want to help people and you want to lead them to self-discovery. OK, there's a saying that we say all the time is selling is not telling. If I tell you this is bad for you or, or, or whatever, uh, it's not as powerful if I ask you questions. Well, what would that do for your health? What would do there? How much would you make? What would you do there? If you didn't get this sold, what is plan B? What would you do next? Ask questions and lead them to that. Say they want to sell their house and they want to make the money or, or whatever. And they have some, okay, well, what would you do with the money? Okay, because a lot of people... Uh, like want to sell a house, and this is also it plays into owner financing. Say they have a two hundred thousand dollar house that they want to sell, and and I was telling, listen, I'm not trying to be nosy. I'm trying to help you. But let's say you got that two hundred thousand dollars. What are you going to do with it? Most people don't necessarily know how to take that two hundred thousand dollars and make it grow. Okay. The other thing that they don't know is they're probably going to pay thirty percent tax on there. Again, I'm not an accountant, so as soon as they close, they have to write thirty percent of that to Uncle Sam. Okay, so 30, that, that's $60,000. So immediately, as soon as they sell that, they turn that 200,000 into 140. Okay, are they gonna let that sit in the bank? If they let it sit in the bank, that's what inflation, it decreases their buying power. So in getting them to own or carry, where are they gonna put their money? What kind of return? Okay, we went over that rule of 72, but if I could give them a 6% return on their money, that's actually better than cash for them because now their money is actually working for them. So anyway, I would advise you to, if you're younger or whatever, get into sales, okay? And there's so much information out there now. There's more information now 
than ever before, especially like with this platform. Anything you want to know, you can get on YouTube and learn. And that's one reason, too. I think colleges will probably become obsolete unless you want to be like an attorney or a doctor or an engineer. And the reason is the pace of business is moving so fast and it's only looking to accelerate from what I see that I want to go learn something now that I can apply to my business tomorrow. And literally, I can sit up and watch YouTube. I can Google search things. I can find platforms. I can ask questions. Uh, and I can know that answer to that question tomorrow. I don't have to wait to enroll. I don't have to sit through classes that I don't pertain to anything. And in business, especially the smaller business, you want to be nimble. That's the advantage that you have when you're first getting started over a lot of the big businesses. Big businesses move slow. They can't change as fast. They have huge uh, numbers of employees and lots of uh, lots of other things that just don't move quickly. When you're a smaller business and you have fewer, you can move quick. You can try out innovations. You can try things. And, and that's another thing that I uh, would encourage, fail. Failure uh, is an event. It's not a person. As a man and boys, you need to fail so fast. Go fail as many times and as, as much as you can. You need to fail because for men, it helps us. That's how we learn. We're not very good. I use the example. Uh, I have a, a son. I have a son and a daughter. My daughter, I can tell her something. She's like, okay, she gets it. Boys, not so much. Uh, we kind of have to learn by failure. And so what happens was it also kind of goes into the different styles of parenting from a man to a woman. But my son would leave his car light on. He would uh, sit and listen to the radio. And I don't know what he's doing, but he would leave his car light on, his car, the inside light on. Well, a couple times I told him, I'm like, hey, you left your car light on, go turn it off. Well, after like the third time, I'm like, he's not learning. He needs to fail. He needs to go out there and try to go to work or try to go to school and it's cold and he can't start his car. Then what he'll do is he will not leave that light on. Okay. So when I say fail, also when you're young as a man, uh, especially if you live at home still, 18, 19, 20, okay, you have a lot further drop. You, you can go fail. You have no kids. You have no responsibility. You have, because the drop is falling. You fail, you're still at your parents' house. Also, you can sack away a ton of money. Okay, when you're married and you have three kids and businesses and stuff and you fail, okay, that's a much greater fall, okay? And so you have a lot more to lose and you're also responsible for a lot more people. So what it does for you is it doesn't allow you maybe to be as risky as you can if it's just yourself. And if it's just yourself, uh, like me, you don't go eat it. You don't get to eat for a day. Who cares? Three days and... Eh. You know, so you can fail, but your kids or your wife doesn't get to eat for a day. That's a big deal. You're a shithead. OK, so that's why single young males go fail, go fail quickly. And the other thing that I found is that's how we learn. So the faster you fail and the faster you do things, the faster you'll learn. And what that does for you is it starts to help you to understand and find what is valuable, what works, what doesn't work. Because you can sit here and watch videos and talk about crap all the time, whatever, but the rubber meets the road in action. You have to go do it, okay? And it's different when you do it. It's different feeling when your money's on the line. It's different feeling when you have to make the payment. It's different feeling when it's yours than somebody else's or to watch it. There's a different emotion. There's It's much greater. Uh, there's also more pride in that. So what I would tell you is go out, fail, fail often, fail quickly, and figure out what works. And then when you find your path and what you're doing, get on the internet, YouTube, uh, I always joke the YouTube, it's because I'm old, uh, get on the YouTube and uh, figure out what you're doing and go watch videos and learn and just sit there and just feed yourself information, uh, feed yourself knowledge, feed yourself uh, anything that you want, you know, be curious and go explore, find what you like, find what works. And go try different things. And if you don't know, I mean, you want to do editing for videos. You can get on uh, Skillshare. We, we talked about that before. There, there's anything you can do, content, all kinds of things. So anyway, the biggest takeaway is go fail, go fail often, hurry up, get it do, going. The more that you uh, do that, uh, the faster you're going to be successful. And the other thing um, that, uh, that I always say is it also makes for a better story. Okay, 
I like a good story. When I die, I want people talking about it. I want a good story to tell. When I'm old and crusty and can't do things, I want to tell about all the different adventures that I've had. I was in the military for 15 years, black belt jujitsu. I've also been through bankruptcy. I've been through foreclosure. I want experiences, okay? Because that's also who you respect. Do you respect someone later in life who never did anything and they had an easy life, right? That sucks. That's not how we look up to. We look at someone that got their ass kicked over and over and over and over and they still succeeded. That's the kind of life I want. I don't want it easy. I want challenges. Uh, I welcome them. It also makes you think differently because whenever you're given a problem, it's a chance to learn. And that's why I tell you when you fail at the beginning, because that lesson that you learn when you only had to fall this far, okay, might be something that applies later in life where you have a much greater drop. And you're going to have experience with making decisions. You're going to have experience with numbers. You're going to have all that knowledge that you can take and bring to bear to make a good decision. And so for a man, I don't think there's any other way uh, to do that. You can read books. Okay. I would, I would try to learn from other people's mistakes as much as possible also. Um, but that's, that's not the most effective. It, men need to suffer. You need to hurt a little bit. It needs to suck. Okay. That's what for a man, uh, will put that in your memory and learn, teach you that lesson. So that's, that's my two cents on that. All right. Also, I wanted to thank you for stopping by the channel. I uh, appreciate it. If there's anything that you're interested in or any questions that you have, put in the comments and I'll get that answered for you. Thanks again and see you next time.